Hello, and welcome to Archveldor's Hacks with Archveldor and his amazing hacks. Today I'm going to be showing you some battleground exploits, the first of which is here in Deepwind Gorge. Uh, this is a very strong exploit. We're going to be going to the Goblin Mine. Goblin Mine, you can see on the map there. And the Goblin Mine, the mine shaft itself, has a very interesting property. If you go into it, you can see it has a teleport field teleports you straight back out every time you go in and it just goes on forever it's an infinite loop now no normal method uh, whether exploitative or standard uh, will enable you to get into the mine while you're actually in physical form however you can get in there in ghost form and what you need to do is get the opposite faction to kill you right on the edge of the mine or alternatively if the opposite faction isn't around if you control the mine you can just go to help and then unstuck and teleport to graveyard okay, and that will get you into ghost form and then when you're in ghost form don't resurrect run away from the graveyard run back to the goblin mine When you're back at the Goblin Mine, you can actually go past the teleport field. The teleport field does not work when you're in ghost form. You can go to the back of the mine, and the back of the mine, there, the teleport field ends. So you are now completely inaccessible. What you can do is, say like you're a hunter here, you can send your pet out to defend the mine. If the pet is killed, then you can simply resurrect it and set it out again and because your character your tune itself cannot be killed because no one can get at you you can do this pretty much indefinitely you can't take your own tune out of the cave without hitting the teleport field and being booted outside again but you can repeatedly send pets or minions uh, out to defend the mine so that's how it works for pet using classes If you haven't already watched it, I would advise you to have a look at my video, Have Two Combat Pets Fight For You, because uh, that will greatly enhance the effect of this, of this technique. Now, for the Warlock class, there's an additional method you can use which greatly enhances the technique uh, even further. Uh, in the form I've just stated, it's already very powerful, but for the Warlock, it's really quite game-breaking because the Warlock has an ability called Demonic Circle. So we follow the same basic method, and kill ourselves and then resurrect and run to the back of the cave. What we're going to do when we're inside the mine at the back here is just lay down a demonic circle and we can teleport back to that location at any time. Why this makes such a difference is that you're no longer completely reliant on your pet uh, to actually defend the flag of the mine. You can come in and out at, at will. So now I'm outside. If I get attacked at any stage by large numbers of the opposite faction, I can just simply teleport behind the teleport field again. And then I'm effectively invulnerable. So a uh, high powered warlock, a warlock with, you know, close to full prideful gear, can fairly easily defend the mine against five, six, maybe even more players. Uh, and that's really a, a crucial difference. It's It basically means you're going to win almost every battleground you fight unless the teams are hopelessly mismatched to begin with. The only way the opposing team can actually take the mine 
is if they can CC you for as long as it takes to actually cap the mine and CC your pet or kill you, you know, uh, in a few seconds uh, so you don't have enough time to teleport to the back of the mine. Uh, just going to show you how this works in practice. There you see I've just vanished to the back of the mine. There's no way the opposing faction can get at me at all. And you could just come back and forth at will like that. The second method I'm going to show you today is in Eye of the Storm. And this will enable warlocks to hold the flag indefinitely. So what you're going to do right at the start, when you're in the starting area, when the bubble's vanished, you're just going to put down a demonic circle again. You're going to put that demonic circle down right on the edge of the rock you start on. Okay, and then you're going to go and get the flag. And the idea behind this exploit is we're going to take the flag back to the starting area and we're going to use the demonic circle to port up to the starting rock. Taking the flag here. And when we're back on the starting rock we cannot be attacked by the opposite faction. So you can hold the flag indefinitely. So this essentially makes it so that if your team can hold two bases throughout the battle then you've won the game. That's all they have to do. You want to get out of the line of sight. You can actually be targeted up there but if you go a bit back a bit further as I am here you're out of range. Don't get too close to the edges. The first time I tried this, uh, a rogue, clever rogue, managed to shadow step up there and take me out. But that aside, if you stay in the middle of the rock, uh, you're completely invulnerable. And you can stay there until the end of the match. Uh, just come down and cap at the end if you feel that's necessary. One useful advantage of this is that if you're an alliance team that likes to fight in the middle all the time, there really is no point at all in them doing that, so they tend not to. That itself is actually quite a huge advantage. Third exploit I'm going to show you today is in Strand of the Ancients. We're waiting on the boat to attack here. You need to be attacking first. Again, this is a warlock exploit, and I'm going to be showing you how to get inside one of the gates. Okay, so you're attacking as normal. You basically just want to fight as normal for the first round. See if you can take those gates down as quickly as possible. Then, towards the end of the battleground, you want to go to a gate that's already been knocked down. Just lay down the demonic circle. And that demonic circle will persist through the rounds. When it comes to the next round, that demonic circle will still be there. And you can port straight back there. Going back to that gate where I laid the circle down. and now we're at the gate I can actually port inside the gate and it's difficult to see because you can't see the textures of the gate from the inside because you're never supposed to be able to get inside uh, but trust me there's a gate on both sides of me there and this is useful for a number of reasons uh, that you can see now I've moved outside I can port in and out, in and out at will this exploit is useful for a number of reasons you're basically invulnerable inside the gate uh, but you can come out at any moment and attack anybody who is attacking the gate, or you can get your pet to do it. There you see. Uh, this makes uh, defending the gates a lot easier. So I'm basically invisible while I'm inside the gate. Uh, my pet isn't. Uh, 
can see my pet goes down to attack the demo there and I can just step out whenever I want and fear or attack in some other way uh, any of the opposition faction that attack the gates and if I start to take too much damage outside the gates then I can just pour it back inside the gate again and I can just back up and come out of the other side there you see I'm just walking back out of the gate The penultimate exploit I'm going to show you today is in the Battle for Gilness. And again, we're at the mines. Something about mines in battlegrounds that are very buggy. And it's been known for ex to explorers for some time that you can get into the Gilness mines in a variety of ways. The easiest of which is to blink as a mage, or just as I did there or use to displace a beast if you're a druid. There's actually a number of other ways, such as using a two-seater mount, or I believe the Darkmine Tigers still work. Uh, and this can be used uh, not just as a tool for exploration, but also as a means of escaping from dangerous battle situations but it can also be used to lure other players into the mines. This rogue, for example, she can't get in normally, but when I'm standing right by the gate, she can use Shadow Step to come in after me. Warriors can do the same thing with Charge. Uh, and what you want to happen in that situation, don't, don't try and fight them. Let them kill you, just as I did there because then they're completely stuck in the mine. There's absolutely no way they can get out unless they use help or unstuck. Now you'd think everyone would do that, but in the vast majority of situations where I've managed to lure somebody into the mine, and I've done this a lot, <laughs> they uh, they tend to either wander about and have a look around just because they're curious, or they just simply obviously don't know how to get out. Or in that particular case, I think the young lady uh, is uh, a bot for whatever reason you'll often find you take that player out and effectively the whole team is a man down that's much more significant than killing somebody you know and having them rest for 30 seconds they're just completely out of the game the primary method i use to get people into the mines in the first place is the mind control belts you can use with engineering or uh, you can sheep them inside the mines also okay the final exploit i'm going to show you today is in alterac valley this is a, a subtle thing, uh, but for players in the Horde faction, it's quite significant. It's uh, it's essentially just a wall walking glitch. But um, I think if you just think about the implications of what I'm going to show you, you'll appreciate um, what a significant difference it can make. Basic problem for the Horde faction, it's well known that Autorak Valley has a massive alliance bias. I think even alliance players acknowledge this. I mean, it's certainly obvious from the statistics. Now, this bias is generally attributed to the difficulty of attacking the alliance-controlled area of Dunvaldar. Now, this has a lot of NPCs, uh, archers with a seemingly limitless range. Uh, and it just takes too long and it's too dangerous uh, for the Horde to capture the bunkers here effectively. So what you can do is go around the back here. If you go to this location right down the back of Dumbledore's south, you can avoid most of the NPCs. You can avoid the bridge. This is usually very difficult for the Horde to cross. And just go straight into Dumbledore south cap it straight away okay so there's the hacks hope you found them useful and interesting uh, if you like this then please subscribe and thank you for watching take care this has been Archveldor